Hello, and welcome to our online logic class for the day before Thanksgiving. Um, today, we are going to be going over, I'll be going over, and you'll be listening. Uh, the truth table test for validity, as it's called in the book. It should be section 6.6 .6 in your book if you have the red book, and if you have the older blue book like I do, it's section 3.6, but the test is the same, whichever book you have. Um, if you recall, when we first started doing truth tables, the goal was to show how it is that a, whether an argument is valid or invalid based on the truth table. And so today, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to take everything we've learned about how to set up a truth table and set up a truth table for an entire argument. And uh, without further ado, I'll just start doing it and show you how you do the truth table test. So, uh, give a simple argument such as this. Um, if it's raining, uh, then the roads are wet. And then, that's our first premise. The second premise is, it's raining. And as you may be able to guess, we can conclude from this that the roads are wet. Uh, it's a simple little two-premise argument. If it's raining, the roads are wet. If it's raining, therefore the roads are wet. Now what we want to do is use our truth tables to prove that this is valid. And once we've learned how to do it for a simple argument like this, hopefully we'll be able to ex expand that into more complex arguments. The, thus using the truth tables to actually teach us whether something's valid, not just to confirm what we already know. And so here's what we do. We simply take uh, we take this argument and translate it into logic. If it's raining, then the roads are wet becomes R horseshoe W. Doesn't really matter what letters you use there, but it should be something like this, with parentheses around, of course. Uh, it's raining, well that was just R, we already had that, right? Conclusion, the roads are wet, which is W from there. So there's our argument. What we're going to do is we're going to make a truth table where we put both of the premises and the conclusion on the same truth table. And then we test, what we'll be testing to do is to see if there's any case where the premises could be true and the conclusion false. As you should know from our definition of validity, if there's a case where the premises are true and the conclusion is false, then the argument's invalid. But if there isn't, then it should be valid. So here's how we go. We draw our little truth table like so. We've got only two sentence letters, R and W, so we fill in their values. 0, 0, 1, 1, just false, false, true, true. And false, true, false, true for W. Those are the values of the simple, the simple atomic sentences. Then we put our premises in to the right over here. So our first premise is R horseshoe W. Then we divide it with a vertical line. We get R. And then we divide it with another, this time, double vertical line to get W. That indicates that this is our conclusion. So usually we use a double line for the conclusion. The book also uses this little triple dot symbol whenever it's putting the conclusion. That's letting you know that that's, that's the conclusion. I prefer to separate them with lines, that way I'm a little bit more clear on exactly where a premise begins and ends. You can do it the way I do it, the way the book does it. You can either use the triple dot or the double bar or both, like I'm doing here. Okay. R and W are easy. We've already got them, so that's why this is a very simple proof. R and W, we know what they are. R is 0, 0, 1, 1. Can you just fill that in? Done. Truth table done. W is 0, 1, 0, 1. Truth table done. The only one that's going to take any work at all is if R then W. And so we just have to remember back to our truth table for the horseshoe. In the case where they're both false, so false, false, a horseshoe comes out true. In the case where the left-hand side, the antecedent is false, and the right-hand side, the consequent, is true, then the whole thing comes out true again. When the antecedent, the left-hand side, is true and the consequent is false, the whole thing comes out false. That's the only case, because when they're both true, it comes out true. 
And now I realize this is something that's always a danger in truth tables. I drew the numbers bigger over here than I did over there, so let me adjust that so that we can get everything on the same lines. Okay, and there we are. We have now done a truth table. We can circle this, that's the value for the horseshoe. We can scratch through those if you want so you don't get confused by them. Now to test for validity, this is the, the um, truth table test. We simply check to see if there's any line where both premises are true, but the conclusion is false. Any row, that is. So we ask ourselves, is there a row with true premises and a false conclusion? If the answer is yes, if there is a row with true premises and a false conclusion, that means it's invalid. Because remember, validity means the premises can't be true while the conclusion is false. So if the premises are, in any case, they're true where the conclusion is false, that means they could be. That means that's one possibility for them. And so it's invalid. If the answer to this question, is there a row with the true premises and a false conclusion, then the argument is invalid. But if the answer is no, then the argument is valid. Every case where the premises are true is one where the conclusion is true as well. It's very important um, that that's what we're going for here. We're going to check the premises to see, just in the cases where they're true, make sure the conclusion is true as well. If every time the premises are true, the conclusion is, it's valid. I know I'm repeating myself, but that's, that's the point. Um, that's, repetition means memory sometimes. So let's check it. Um, first row, we have a true premise and a false premise. So this is not a row with true premises and a false conclusion because it doesn't have all true premises. Second row, second line is it has a true premise and then a false premise again. So this also doesn't matter to us because it's got um, a false premise, so it's irrelevant to this question. Third line it has a false premise again that already throws it out and a true premise. But having that one false premise means we don't even have to pay attention to line three. The final line does have true premises, so it's relevant. Is there a row of true premises and a false conclusion? But look, conclusion is true, 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 true. There's no case where the premises are true and the conclusion is false. So this argument is valid. I'm going to pause for just a second here. 